that based on the information we have at this moment, this was an act of terror and a particularly cowardly act of terror. Eight people are dead after a driver plows into a busy bike path in New York City. What we're learning about the suspect. Chaos on the streets. We're getting a look at dramatic video in the moments after the New York City attack. What witnesses are saying they saw in the aftermath. And we start tonight with that breaking news out of New York City. Eight people are dead, at least 11 more injured after police say this man drove into a bike path in what's being called by the city's mayor a cowardly act of terror. Within the last few hours, the suspect has been identified as 29-year-old Saifalo Saipov. CBS News says he's a truck driver who came to this country from Uzbekistan in 2010 who has known addresses in both New Jersey and Florida. Now here's the very latest on what we know at this hour in the investigation. Police say the suspect drove a rented pickup truck, jumped a curve and drove onto the crowded bike path along the West Side Highway. The vehicle then continued for several blocks, hitting more than a dozen people. Witnesses say Saipov then got out, holding what appeared to be two guns that turned out to be a paintball gun and a pellet gun, and reportedly shouted, God is good in Arabic, before being shot by a police officer. Police say they believe the suspect acted alone. They say there's no evidence that this is part of a larger attack, but CBS News notes that a note referencing ISIS was found inside the truck, and Governor Cuomo has ordered increased security across the state. This has been a very chaotic time near One World Trade Center since this terror attack happened. Emily Deficiani kicks off our team coverage by joining us live now from the staging area near where the attack happened on the Lower West Side. Emily, what are you finding tonight? Well, Liz, Greg, like you said, we are being staged on Chamber Street, which is just a few blocks away from where the attack happened. There is still a heavy police presence at the scene, as well as about four helicopters currently flying above us. Now, I want to show you just a bit further down the road where we are not allowed to take our cameras. You can just make out a school bus that appears to be damaged. Police say that a, the driver did hit a school bus before leaving his truck. Now, just walking along city streets, we've heard people talking on their cell phones, telling people about what happened and expressing their fear and sadness. Governor Cuomo and Mayor Bill de Blasio held a press conference with top police officials just hours after the attack. We know that this action was intended to break our spirit. But we also know New Yorkers are strong, New Yorkers are resilient, and our spirit will never be moved by an act of violence, an act meant to intimidate us. New York is an international symbol of freedom and democracy. That's what we are, and we are proud of it. That also makes us a target for those people who oppose those concepts. Now, if you can see right above us, One World Trade Center is lit up red, white, and blue at the direction of Governor Cuomo in honor of freedom and democracy. He has ordered additional security throughout the state. For now, we're live in Manhattan. I'm Emily Tavishiani, CBS 6 News. Thank you, Emily. We'll check back with you in a few minutes. And as we mentioned, this afternoon's attack happened just a short distance from the World Trade Center. It's the Lower West Side, right alongside the Hudson River. Yeah, I want to give you a look at this animation here behind us so you can get a better idea of where all of this took place. The truck crash itself happened at West Street and Chambers, and that's very close to the West Side Highway. In the last few hours, we have seen some dramatic video come into our newsroom showing different scenes from the aftermath. This one from a witness shows the chaos in the moments right after the attack. And we have some photos now that give you an idea of just how quickly police were able to get to the scene and take the suspect into custody. One witness says the whole thing was chaos. A car and a school bus like collided and like people in the school bus got hurt and so the guy, a guy got out of his car and like challenged the guy and there's like a big guy chasing the guy who hit the bus and the guy with the bus came, the guy who hit the bus came out he was like carrying a gun right on like, the west side highway in this like in between part here. Some witnesses even told police they thought the whole thing was a Halloween prank but then quickly realized that was not the case. 
The eight deaths in today's terror attack are the first caused by a religious extremist in New York City since 9-11. The governor earlier today called this the work of a lone wolf and said the threat appeared to be over. Here with us now is Rick Matthews from UAlbany, terrorism expert. Rick, thanks so much for being with us. Let's get right to this. How can you protect people? You can't barricade everything. You can't put police everywhere. Can we stop this from happening? Boy, that's a tough question. Everybody's asking the same thing. We do a very good job, particularly the good folks in New York City, of protecting against these kind of attacks during major events, uh, like the Macy's Parade, all those kinds of things like that. It's just very difficult during a steady state to protect every piece of our roadway, every sidewalk we have. And unfortunately, you know, the terrorists, the, the, both ISIS and Al Qaeda, have identified this area, this very weapon, this kind of a weakness, vulnerability, as something they could exploit. Mm -hmm. They identified it back in 2010 and again earlier this year. And we're seeing it happen here, unfortunately. You know, thousands of people tonight, Rick, were out uh, taking part in the Halloween parade in New York City, trying to really thumb their noses at the terrorists and say, we're going to go about business as usual, as they were requested to do by the governor and the mayor. But is there a point at which we can no longer have business as usual? Boy, I don't think so. I hope not. I mean, we have to change our mindset a bit. We have to look around, be more aware, be more vigilant. I think we did a pretty good job here. I mean, it was a bad attack, but it was ended pretty quickly. People got away quickly and responded very fast. That is the new norm, I think. And uh, unfortunately, that is that. But we can't change our life because of these things. All right, Rick Matthews, you all been in. Oh, it was quick, but thank you so much for coming yes. in uh, this late and being with us live here tonight. Sharing My your pleasure. insight. We'll thank see you again you. soon. Thanks, Rick. President Trump also commenting tonight about the attack in New York City. Just hours ago, he sent this tweet saying, quote, In New York City, it looks like another attack by a very sick and deranged person. Law enforcement is following this closely, not in the USA, end quote. We're also getting reaction from senior New York Senator Chuck Schumer on today's attack. He released a statement saying, in part, quote, As the investigation unfolds, it's critical that we learn what we can from this incident and do everything we can to prevent this from happening again. The scourge of terrorism he said is unfortunately still with us and we must remain vigilant as ever. We first told you about today's tragedy in New York City on our CBS 6 News app. You can download it now for free to keep up with breaking news on this story or any other. Just search WRGB in the App Store or Google Play. Our live crews, by the way, remain on the scene tonight. More coming up in this newscast. Also, tune in tomorrow morning starting at 4.30 for our continuing coverage live from New York.